you said is Harbir Bhatia and I'm running for Santa Clara City Council District 1. We Gen Xers and our millennials, <laughs> we're like, you know, we're the squeeze generation. We're like, we're tired of being squeezed. You we know? have one life to live. We don't get to come back to this again. For Mummy Papa, we're not really big fans of this kind of stuff, right? They're not like, hey, your job is to run. Your job is no, you're just to play safe, be on the sidelines, do your saver projects. Because Sarbata Pala is so part of our family. But then that final realization came and now, boy, are they on board. Every day they're pushing me, go, 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 go. So I think I'm very motivated now to know that this is what I'm meant to do. It will be in the form of a council member and maybe something else in the future, but this is the place for me. So I'm running for district one. I'm running and against an incumbent that was not elected by this district, was elected in the old model. Uh, this is the first time my city is running this district as a district election. In the past, it was done as a general election and the city was sued by the Asian Law Alliance that felt that minorities or grassroots leaders were never getting a chance to run or to win. There was a lack of minority voices and diverse perspectives and actually qualified individuals that are truly amazing in our community. Now that, that we lost the lawsuit, this city got cut into six districts. We're really lucky. Now we have a chance to really change up the council from politics as usual and the establishment to people that truly represent and are qualified to be council members. So um, I, right now our city is roughly 65 plus percent or uh, minority. Of that in my district is 67% and of that 40 plus percent are South Asian, 45% are Asians. That's huge. But how many of them are not involved? They're very passive. And when we have such a large population of voters, gosh, we have a very powerful voice. So the biggest thing I would say right now um, as a kind of superset of our priorities is um, economic recovery from COVID and the financial deficits in my case, my city's facing. So I'm calling that the sustainable future. Sustainable in two ways, economically and climate wise. We cannot hide from the climate. I mean, the fires, the smokes, oh my God. These are gonna become compounding issues. The second is a livable and qual a city with a higher quality of life. What does that mean? We need to have places to live. Shelter is the most critical thing for a healthy society. The Silicon Valley Index showed that of the 75% that are homeless, more than 50% are homeless because of a lack of jobs, eviction, economy and only 25% total are sheltered. When I mean, the problem here happens to be one related to housing and the availability of housing. Youth, when I interview the youth, they say, Herbie Auntie, how are we going to live in the city? So my youth members are 12 of them. They're constantly telling me, I will have to move away. Seniors are saying, I can't afford to move into something smaller or something that I can afford on my fixed income. Teachers, essential services, they don't have the paychecks of a doctor, of a technologist, or even of an administrator or manager. Number three is collaboration and community engagement. Community engagement is not happening. Public thinks things are fine. Well, guess what? In my city, 76% of our benefits uh, and salaries uh, go is the overall budget. My part of the city has the largest amount of change. We have the Levi Stadium, the Great America, Convention Center, all the majority of the new housing development, we're expecting 35,000 people to move in. Where's the infrastructure? So now government needs to think about how do I work with my organizations and institutions and my private sector corporations to solve the problems that my budget cannot solve. I'm a big fan of Einstein, again, because he loved, you know, E equals MC squared which is again, my, my feeling of the oneness amongst all, that when you kind of bring us all down, we're all energy and we're just taking different shapes and forms. So ikunkar literally means that oneness amongst all things, right? Um, my mom and dad, I, I know at this age, people think these are not things to say, but guess what? Um, once they gave me the green light, I, I really felt everything kind of like hit together that all the experiences we've had growing up and watching them now with this packaging on top of being able to run was like everything they did had meaning and purpose because it brought me to this point always seva was that kind of part of our my mindset and community service was part of our mindset so it kind of helped us deal with the fact that we were so different some were because um principally that matt worked for me and that was baba nanak he's probably my most um most meaningful and most important role model and the youth now that are on my committee, every day they come to my house. Every 
single day. And they remind me that just the simple thing of running has changed their whole vision of the future. And we need people to remember that either we take care of everyone and those people around us, because what helps somebody else will help you at the end. And I believe that is so powerful.